as the the the, the new list that FMCSA just released. So can you can you uh, right, talk a little right. bit about all of that? Sure, sure. So it's it's. Let me just preface by saying it's not the staff program. I just gave it that name, okay? And mm-hmm. and drivers know we know that that's the term that is used when you have a, a failed drug spree. That's just the term that's used. Mm-hmm. However, um, what is called technically in you know. Uh, I always say real people terms in the DOT FMCSA terms. It's called the um, the return to duty process. Okay. That's what it's called. And in order to complete the return to duty process, there's six steps. And step step one is where you have to designate a SAP professional. SAP stands for substance abuse professional. Mm-hmm. Um, they have to go through the substance abuse program. And um, step Two, three, and four are all completed by the SAP professional, um, the substance abuse professional. They have to go through an evaluation. That SAP is, is DOT certified, and they um, determine whether this is habitual, whether you're an addict, whether you you know need extensive counseling, whatever the case may be. They determine that in step two, three, and four, and then they will make you go through whatever it is you have to go through before you can um, go back and take another drug screen. Mm-hmm. You have to, it has to be negative for the setup. And then after you take that drug screen, it comes back negative. Then you're, you're able to, you're in step five. You don't have a check mark in step five, but you're in step five and you're able to go um, and out and search for a company. And, and, and this is usually when um, they reach out to us um, because they they've searched and they see us on Google, they see us on YouTube and Instagram, mm-hmm. all the other places where you can you can find us. And because uh, we're the, really essentially um, the only company that's educating on it to the driver, we're the only company that's out there educating the driver on one how to stay out of it and what to do and what not to do, but also um, how to navigate through it once you do, if you, for, you know, for some reason end up in there. And um, you have to find a company in step five. And then um, that company is essentially, because uh, it's, it's the new, it's the new uh, criminal justice system. Mm. Because you have to go through this process. Then you have to find a sponsor. That's your new trucking company that you're going to work for. Um, and the FF, and once you finish that process, the FMCSA says you can perform safety sensitive functions again. You have to go find you a sponsor company who is essentially your probation officer. And that probation officer has to make sure that you take so many tests. The DOT says you have to have six in, uh, in the first 12 months. Mm. Okay. And, um, that's the minimum. Your counselor can say, you know what? I think they are an addict. They 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 need you know, at uh, Narcs Anonymous classes or mm-hmm. or outpatient or inpatient or you know what? I think they just smoke reefer on the weekends. I, they can just go through this online course. So there's different things that they can put them through, but that certified counselor is the one that makes that decision. But the um, you can I have a driver who's on it for five on probation for five years. Um, it has to do one test a month for five years. Now, let me um, ask you something about the test. Is is of course that's the drug test, right? Yes, drug testing. Yes, drug testing. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Drug testing, and 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 their drug tests are all observed. So that means somebody got to come in and and watch them pull their pants down and pull their shirt up to make sure they didn't bring anything with them. So every time you test after you after you have a violation in the clearinghouse, every time you test, you're going to be observed. Wow, that's crazy. So this is not something you want to go through. You, this is not anything that you want to put yourself through. And here's here's the thing: there are there's there's a, a a ton of positives, okay? But then there's also a huge percentage of drug test refusals and more and more people are getting refusals 
because they don't understand what a refusal really looks like. And, and I'll give you an example. Uh, here's a refusal. I come into the drug testing lab and I sign in and I see that um, the, the room is full, the way room is full. So Talk I go stand him. outside. Uh huh. I go stand outside, and then I start talking to my mama on the phone, and they call my name, and I miss my name. That's a drug test refusal. What? Yes. If you go smoke a cigarette after you sign in and you miss your name, that is a drug test refusal. Jerry, hold on. I, 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 I'm I not talk lying. To- I've talked to hundreds of drivers that have a refusal because of things like this. Now, I talk to a lot of companies, and I, I have asked the recruiters at the time, like, if I go take the drug test, and let's say, excuse me, I take I go to the drug test. I get a call from another company. Another company says, lockout. We got something much better for you. Come on. And I'm like, okay, I'm gone. Is that a refusal? That's a refusal. That is a flat-out refusal. I've had several drivers, several drivers that happened to in the same in the same week, and they went right next door in the same day and took that test, or the next day and took that test with that other company and passed it. But because they walked out of that first one, that's a refusal. It doesn't matter. So... There's no way that I can go back to the clearinghouse, no phone number, no email, no nothing, just to say, like, hey, I didn't refuse the drug test. I just left the doctor's office? No. You can you can appeal, and I've had many drivers try to appeal. I've only had one driver that was successful. One. <sighs> And there's no phone number. It has to all be in writing. The appeal procedure is all in writing. You guys hear that? You guys hear that? I mean, so it's best from the the, the best advice I got when it when it comes to you know going to take a drug test and if you decide not not to take it, uh, they say don't sign in. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. That's for a pre-employment. But if you are going for a random, you have to report directly to the the the, the testing site. Okay, that's, you have to yeah, now that's different. And go yeah, directly. The, yeah, the ra- yeah, yeah, yeah. The random different. is different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But this is all pre-employment. Yeah, but just because this is what I was talking yeah, pre-employment. About. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's the same thing. But I mean, it's different. Yes, you're right. But pre-employment, if they, if they send you that, it's called a chain of custody form. That's your paperwork that you get to take down to the lab. If you, if you don't go, then that's not a refusal. But if you go and you sign in and you check in at the testing site, then that is a refusal. And you get a call from the, the next company that you've been waiting to call you. And you don't take that test. That's a refusal. Yes. Wow. And and, and here, the the FMCSA just released on December the eighth. Released uh, their updated list of ways that you can get a refusal. And and this is this where, is essentially for company where, where can drivers find, don't usually see this. Where, oh, okay. So we we don't normally see where you. I mean, you can. It's um. It's um. It's an email that the FMCSA. I'll send you the link yeah, and the email do. so that you can. Um, uh, but it's from there how to report a violation because it's essentially for the company to report refusal. Okay, and um, I'll send. I'll email you this list. Please but, do. Um, one Thank thing you. that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, one thing that I didn't know until about two months ago. I had three drivers call me, all in different parts of the country, and um, all of them had had some type of disagreement, argument um, with the test and collection person. Mm-hmm. And and one of them was like, she just had a bad. I feel like she was just having a bad day, and you know, she was pissed off at me, and I was upset, and so we just kind of got back and went back and forth, and then she gave me a refusal. 
well, that is truly can be a refusal. So there, there, the way the FMCSA worded it is words it is failure to cooperate with any part of the urine collection process. So if you arguing with me, you know how sometimes our young ladies, our sisters, would be getting mad and want to act, have an attitude and, and pop off and stuff like that. That could be considered failure to cooperate with any part of the urine collection process. Wow. So wait. Wait, Jerry. So, so let's say, for example, uh, we get in there, and let's say I I couldn't, uh, you know, let's say I couldn't pee. Like, I mean, that mm -hmm. does happen. I mm -hmm. I can't pee. Oh yeah, it's called a shop ladder. It happened all the time. I I I, and, I, and, and, I can't and, pee. They give me, you know, they told me, you know, they they give me some water, and this is from experience. They got a certain amount of water that they can give you. Yeah, over right. a certain they, amount of out. Right. They give me some water. They they took it. They they written it down on the paper and all like that. And gave me the water. Gave me the water. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Luckily for me, I was able to piss. But what if what if the guy after a certain amount of time uh, that they can't pee, would that still be That's considered? A That's a refusal. But we... That's a refusal, and I see it all. All the time. But that we is can't, if, if, if we can't. Cannot produce, if you, it doesn't matter. If you cannot produce, I, I'm telling you what the FMC is saying. I, I know, I'm listening. Not in I, 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 hey, hey, but I'm, this is reality. I deal with this day in and day out. Grown men, grown men calling me and telling me, Miss Jerry, I honestly could not use the restroom in right. that time frame. I honestly couldn't. I, and, and then they can't give you so much water because it'll dilute your urine. So they keep track of how much they can give you and the amounts and stuff like that. And so once once you reach that max, that's it. You can't get any more. You have to produce in that time frame. I did uh, recently. I did a video with um, Ebony Polk at Polk Medical Testing. Mm -hmm. She's a drug test collector. Mm -hmm. It's on our YouTube channel. It's a live that she and I did. And we went through every single one of these refusals. And that was one of them. I have drivers, grown men calling me crying because they've gotten refusals in this nature. Shy bladder is what it's called. Wow. I, I, I didn't know. I, man. This is a reality. This is a reality. That... We, we serve so many drivers that deal with this. Now, the, the positive, ain't nothing I can do about it. Ain't, ain't nothing I can, you know. But I just, it, 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 it bothers me when I hear stories like this. And I hear them all the time. I just talked to a guy this morning during a training class that I was doing. And he called. He had stage four cancer. And he was taking the CBD capsules, it's like a little oil that he puts in his smoothies every morning. Right, right. For, because, um, you know, he has the, the, cancer. Yeah, the pain and stuff like that. And and I, and I he got popped. And I said, I'm sorry. Like, that's, it is what it is. And no one cares. There's no lawyer that you can call. There's no lawyer that's going to ever take your case. What? You just have to then go through the process and it could take you it could you could you could have to pay anywhere from five hundred to two thousand dollars to get back in the truck. See this is what they did. And it's a lot you... of drivers out here living paycheck to paycheck and can't afford to get back in the truck. And so let me give you some numbers. Go ahead. So of the ninety five thousand drivers that have a violation in the clearinghouse over 50,000 of them have not came back into trust. They've left all together. One, because they haven't found us and don't know how to don't know how to navigate through the process. But two, because they just don't want to deal with it. And they're like, I can go down to the, to the chicken yard or I can go to the plant down the street and work there and make the same money or maybe a little bit more and sleep in my bed every day. Mm. There's your driver shortage. I was just There's about to ask you that. 
I was just about to ask you that. Does it's does, a reality? Does, does, this, a reality. does this refusal? Does this ninety five k has that? Does that have a little bit to do with the driver shortage? Oh yeah! Oh, absolutely! It has a lot to do with the driver shortage. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's sharing these numbers from this standpoint. And then when you when you there's comp there's a handful of companies that will hire these drivers, mega wise, mega carrier wise. But the majority of them that will are your small carriers. And so we educate them on how to compliantly hire these drivers and show them what they need to do in order to be able to 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 bring these drivers back into the industry um, because they're not all crackheads and that's what everybody thinks when they're talking to this driver every driver that i've talked to says miss Cherry, as soon as i tell them such and such i got a violation the first thing they they, they just immediately shut down and i said i know baby because they think you're a crackhead like that's literally the thought process Mm -hmm. in this industry and 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 you're exactly right miss jerry this this you know guys ain't guys ain't talking about this no nah, they, they they talking about how to get the bag and how can i get uh mm -hmm. how, I, I can make you I, I i can make you rich i can get you a hundred k just pay me five hundred dollars no they yep. ain't talk, they, they not yep. talking about they not talking about how to get in how to get into the industry after a fail uh after a fail or yeah after uh, a refusal mm -hmm. we now we talking about refusal we not not now we not actually talking about the failed drug test we talking about refusal because if you it's all the same no oh, it's all the same oh, okay okay so the whole yeah so the yeah whole setup, it, 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 you still get a violation mm -hmm. uh, okay so the whole setup then the whole setup to get back in is is going through the going through that process, right? Yep. Whether you were the one that was out on the phone and you missed your your name, you was out smoking a cigarette, and you missed your name being called, or whether you were the one that dropped dirty, you're the same person. You have to go through the same process. There's no difference in and and, and here I get that. I get that driver that calls me and, and he feels like he's above the one who failed the drug screen. No, y'all are y'all are equal. You are equal because this company's gonna look at you equally. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I see yeah. Oh man. Man, Miss Miss Jerry, y'all. Uh came now y'all talking about some trucking giblets there y'all have it right there so in order to get to that bag you gotta be clean for that bag hey. man you see that's that's what the, that's that's what good that's that's why the best conversations start over here on the lockout men podcast show that's what's up Miss Jerry, man, dropping the jewels on that ass, man. So, all right, Miss Jerry. So, after all these drivers have the issue, they get on the phone. They 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 look for ways to to get back into the industry. They come across you. How do you help them? So, usually we get them in the beginning, when they just find out, when they just get their letter from the MRO, from the medical review officer, mm -hmm. or they just get the email that they have a violation, they start searching, and we're the only ones that they find that will give them this information. And so if we tell them what to do and help guide them through the process. And, they, and, they, and here's the thing, there's no charge for any of the services that we provide. That's there's no charge. Um, it's just education, education, education. Who I charge is the carrier that needs that's going to hire you. That's who that's who pays the fee, or the carrier that wants to learn how to hire some of these drivers so their trucks are not sitting. That's who we charge, um, and so we we have a database that we're releasing in um, in January, end of January, and this database is going to have carriers. For the drivers it's going to have again our, our education component for the drivers so that they know 
you know, understand the steps and all of those things uh, as well. But they they come to us. We we have if we have carriers on hand that are that are looking for drivers or that we've taught to hire these drivers, we point them in the direction. Um, and and if if we're able to put them with any of our large carriers that um, will take drivers out of the SAP process, we 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 do that as well. All right, all right, Miss Jerry, coming with the coming with the jewels for real, for real. All right, so Miss Jerry, I, 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 how can how how can uh, drivers that 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 has issues, how how can they get a hold of you? So our website is www.lotrrecruiting. L-O-T-R stands for Life on the Road. You can find us anywhere. Just search Life on the Road Recruiting. Uh, my number is 832-384-5689. That's how a lot of drivers get a hold of me. If it's not me, um, it's Ray or it's Julie. We're all on the YouTube. We're all on um, our social media platforms. Um, but the best place is to... Um, is to go to our website or go to our YouTube and, and find that link and um, fill out fill out the link and, and it, uh, the application link. And it'll kind of tell us. It's a pin streak, so, you know, it's just going to populate your information. But it's going to kind of tell us where you are in your um, trucking career and where you are. If you, you know, are in the SAP or you need to go through the SAP, it's going to tell us all of that. So, um, and, and then from there, we try to pair you with carriers that will, that will take you. All right, all right. Well, Miss Jerry, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really, really do appreciate this information right here, man. Uh, you thank are a, you, you are a me. citizen for real. Like, I, I mean, wow. If you got, yo, if you got any any other jewels that you want to drop anytime, be be sure to get in contact with me, and we'll 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 definitely definitely get this this good information out man absolutely i, I certainly will um we we do it like i said we do a lot on our youtube channel but i definitely want to come on and uh as new information is released um recently uh as as recent as november early november um the fmcsa released something that um came out with regards to these drivers that have a violation that their license can get downgraded and so uh, we did a whole bit on that um, but here's the thing there's always been a provision for the effort for the the driver's license agencies like your your local DMV or whatever mm -hmm. to um, downgrade your license in the event that you have a clearinghouse violation well, now the FMCSA, uh, that was supposed to be in effect in the four, they gave them until 2023, I think, to have the systems in place. Well, now they're giving them to 2024. But right now, it went into effect right now that um, your license can be downgraded if you don't go through that process. If you don't um, go through the staff and, um, you know, get, get back to performing safety sensitive functions and find a carrier, your license can be downgraded within 60 days. Kind of like the medical, kind of like the medical card. So if you don't put your medical on file with the DMV, they can downgrade your license. It's the same thing. So the best advice that me and you both could give is just don't smoke weed every day. That's, that's, about, yep. that's about the gist. That's about the gist of it, y'all. Yeah, that's the gist. We know what we're supposed to do. And that's not that's the gist do. of it, y'all. That's, that's the gist. Absolutely. If you have to ask that question, then it's best to wait. Because we know that you want to get in it so bad because of, you know, maybe your financial situation. But once you come in... And you take that test or you refuse that test, you just mess yourself up even more. So it's just best to either stop doing it, not doing it, or just don't get just, just don't do it at all. Or if you are doing it, if you are smoking, just wait. 
Six, what, what do you say? What, what do you say, uh, Miss Jerry? Three months, six months? What do you What do you say? I always say between five to six months. It, it, it's because here's the thing: you you didn't get that CDL overnight. Mm-hmm. You worked hard for that CDL. You worked mm-hmm. hard to get in that truck. It was some sleepless nights because you didn't think you was gonna pass some tests. You ain't think you was going to pass that road test. Mm -hmm. And so protect your CDL because it's worth its weight in gold. It is truly worth its weight in gold. And so when you take these chances and play Russian roulette, you're playing with your livelihood. And and we we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that. Mm, That is is what's up. Man, Miss Jerry, thank you. Thank you. Shout out to the she trucking trucking group because I I would have never came across you if 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 if, uh, if it wasn't for them. So shout out to uh, Sheree Moore yes, and, shout and, out the, to, and the uh, yes. she trucking trucking group, man. Absolutely, I, I shout made, out to all my girls at she trucking. And if y'all haven't registered for Chattanooga, the she trucking expo in Chattanooga, September the sixteenth through the eighteenth. 2022 make sure you register and be in the building that's it's gonna up. be epic again that's what's up man that's what's up man miss jerry thank you again thank you very much and i, I know you're a very vit uh, i know you're a very busy lady so thank you for taking the time out with me My and pleasure. uh chopping it up thank you. and uh and we'll definitely get back again awesome i'm looking forward to it Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor.